Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Campbell Now News. I'm Joshua Davis. Campbell's very own Alina Heath, a senior on our Campbell volleyball team, has set an incredible record. She went into her match against South Carolina State with 991 kills, and during Campbell's sweep against the Bulldogs, she accumulated another 13. With this, she became one of the few players in program history to notch 1,000 kills in her collegiate career. She joined the company of 10 other former fighting Camels with this prestigious accolade. Congratulations, Alina. And staying on the topic of Campbell's success, Campbell's men's soccer team extends their winning streak 3-0. to zero. Adrian Morales and Tabo Jaquel both helped to seal the deal for the Fighting Camels. Not only did Campbell conclude its three-match home stand with wins over American, George Mason, and UNCG, but Campbell outscored its three opponents by a 9-0 aggregate. Their next matchup is against the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers Tuesday, September 17th at 7 p.m. We'll be back with more state news after this. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. In what's becoming a growing conversation on education and wrongdoing thereof, we're witnessing examples in our very own state. As of Friday, September 13th, Johnson County school officials released a statement regarding 13 seniors, all from Clayton High School, and receiving diplomas without meeting graduation requirements. Each year, schools are required to turn in and send reports to verify their graduating classes are meeting the requirements that are needed in order to graduate. The district stated that the 13 students did not meet either state or county requirements to receive their diplomas. This isn't the first time that this type of incident has occurred. In 2016, there was a similar case in Durham where at least 53 students received their diplomas improperly. The Johnston County School District is now looking back at previous graduating classes of Clayton High School to determine if those students met the requirements that they were supposed to meet. Deputies say a teenager at Triton High School was found with a gun on campus last week. Authorities say the student carried a handgun along with ammunition into the school in a backpack. Parents received a call from Harnett County Schools to let them know what happened. This was the second school weapon issue in just two days. The previous day, the Overhills High School resource officer was reportedly alerted to a weapon in a student's backpack. The officer located the handgun and arrested the student, but no ammunition was found on the student. Officials have found no connection between the two cases. Both students are charged with possessing a weapon on school property, possessing a handgun by a minor, and carrying a concealed weapon, and have, been, and have both been placed under a $100,000 secured bond. And moving on to state politics, there's disagreement in the North Carolina House. Last week, lawmakers voted to override Governor Roy Cooper's budget veto, but some lawmakers said that they were told no vote would take place, so they were not in place to vote. The House Republican leader said they had every right to hold the vote, but some Democrats say they were specifically told there would be no vote that time of day. The Democrats and Governor Roy Cooper say holding the vote when it wasn't expected was misleading. House Republicans have rebuked the claim of a secret override. There are amazing things to discover in the forest. Toothless, time to go. <laughs> what you picking up on, bud? It's a whole hidden world of wonders oh. and the perfect place to spend time with family. What better place to let your imagination soar, experience nature, and create a memory you can share? Oh. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest or park near you. And on to news making national headlines, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has announced an action to ban the sale of flavored electronic cigarettes. Governor Cuomo said to Fox that manufacturers of the flavored e-cigarettes are intentionally targeting the youth and action is being taken to put an end to it. A recommendation by the State's Department of Health Commissioner, Dr. Howard Zucker, to the State Public Health and Health Planning Council could cause emergency regulations to go into effect in as little as two weeks. At Cuomo's behest, the New York State Police have been called to increase action against e-cigarette retailers who, quote, sell to underage youth, end quote. This move by the governor coincides with the Trump administration's plan to ban e-cigarette flavors, numbering in the thousands. Elsewhere in national politics, on Thursday, September 12th, the third Democratic debate took place in Houston, Texas. 
This latest Democratic debate threw up a rich hall of clashes, incidents, and slow-burning controversies and policy collisions that will help define the 2020 race in the weeks to come. Former Vice President Joe Biden appeared to have the best performance of the night, as well as in his campaign so far. Biden's full embrace of Barack Obama's eight years in office, good and bad, helped him considering how popular of a figure Obama was in the Democratic Party in his time running for president. Many topics were brought up that Thursday night, including gun control. One candidate's response, however, is drawing a myriad of responses from across the aisle. Democratic candidate Beto O'Rourke proposed that the United States government should conduct a mandatory buyback on all military-style guns such as AR-15s and many others. When asked of his thoughts on the mass shootings and gun control, he stated, quote, Yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47, end quote, the Texas native said. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. Some are in agreement with O'Rourke, while others are left in confusion with these comments he stated. O'Rourke's comments come in the wake of the shooting in El Paso, Texas. We'll be right back after this. I got it! Hi. Can you help me? I got it. Thank you. No problem. Just like the rules to surviving zombie land, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated and stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared, so start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. An opportunity for fun and relaxation is happening right here in the creek. Tomorrow night, there will be karaoke in Shouse Dining Hall from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. It'll be a great way to take your mind off classes for the night and enjoy yourselves. And we hope to see you there, camels. And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Joshua Davis. We'll have more news Wednesday night as well as college sports tomorrow. We'll see you later.